Dumb Husky and his white cat she's un. Extra chapters. Shwemeng's blind date. Go balls to the wall, Wanning. Under the moonlight, the disciples of Dobeo Villa stood up in rows, facing the stairs in front of them with utmost respect. Besides a little bee that was lying prone on the stairs, there was also a fairy bird with shimmering white body and jade-toned tail feathers. It looked like a combination of a crane, a phoenix, and a peacock. In other words, it was a bird that didn't exist in the human world. In fact, there really was no such bird that existed at all. The truth was, it was the transformed sect leader Zhang. The fairy bird that Zhang Shi had turned into has a long and elegant neck. Its eyes were like colored glass and its pupils were like cold swords, like moonlight on a lake. Under the shine of the moon, its soft feathers glowed with a silver light, overflowing with translucent colors like frost. Its entire body was light silver except for the pale green at the end of its tail feathers which looked like verdant jade condensed in ice and snow. It looks like sect leader Jiang's clothes, someone in the crowd whispered. One female cultivator said softly, such beautiful feathers. I want to pluck one to keep. It was only that honest and earnest child Shui Meng that solemnly scrutinized Zhang Yuchen. After a while, he released the question that had been burning within his soul, what breed of chicken are you? In response, Zhang Yuchen fixed him with a fierce yet icy gaze. Or are you a duck? If it was anyone else who had dared to ask this type of question, they would have been killed already. But since this is Shui Meng, Zhang Shi couldn't do anything but merely look to him with a haughty indifference. He didn't want to deal with these foolish plebeians anymore so he spread his glimmering wings that was flowing with light and silently flew away from Dobeo Manor. It looked like he wasn't planning on coming back. There was a possibility that he may never want to come back to Dobeo Manor in this lifetime. Everyone gazed at Shui Ziming with reverence, hero worship apparent in their eyes. Shui Meng didn't understand and asked, does he plan on going back to Gaiyuye like this? The female cultivator who wanted to pluck Zhang Shi's feathers looked at his trail with starry eyes, Ah, oh, sect leader Zhang is so beautiful. His flight is leaving a trail of silver and green light. Her sex sisters reminded her, it might just be his clothes. You weren't here to see how long sect leader Jiang's robes trailed after him. Oh hey, do you think he had ever trip over himself when he walked with those? At these whispered comments, the two major lackeys from Gaiyu Ye sect who were intimately familiar with their sect leader's temper, gave a fierce warning to all the people in the courtyard, no one is permitted to speak of what happened tonight. Otherwise, if you ever get inflicted with a life-threatening ailment then you can forget about coming to Gaiyu Ye and could only accept your imminent death. After doing so, they led away the retinue from Gaiyu Ye and with the noise of their flapping robes, followed Zhang Yuchen's lead and moved to return to Gaiyu Ye sect. Who would have thought that sect leader Zhang, leader of the cultivation world's number one sect, would be defeated by the scroll spirit? Although the scroll spirit couldn't really hurt Zhang Shi, how many people in this world could disgrace him so thoroughly? Everyone couldn't help but worry. Of the leaders of the nine great sects, Ma Yun and Zhang Shi were now both down. They each had their own strengths and neither leader could be considered weak. So then, amongst the younger generations there was Shui Meng and the Mei brothers but were they enough to defeat the spirit? This was very worrisome. Doboa Manor was suddenly shrouded in a cloud of doubt and a fog of misery. Even the little bee that was the transformed manor master Ma dropped its wings and seemed so dispirited that it seemed he might never flutter again. At this point, Mei Hangxiu who was examining the things that Zhang Shi left behind in the room, suddenly let out a laugh. Shui Meng turned to him and asked, how can you laugh in this situation? What's so funny? Come and see. Shui Meng was still angry and unwilling to interact with Mei Hangxiu but he couldn't contain his curiosity and sidled over. Mei Hangxiu smiled so widely that his jade eyes sparkled. He raised a written document and stand beside to Shui Meng, I've never known this method of pretending to be woman before. Sect leader Zhang is truly brilliant. What's this? How can you use a written document to pretend to be a woman? 
Shui Meng was utterly confused as he took that sheet of paper from Mei Hanks Yu. Upon reading it, he was flabbergasted. Just what the hell is this? Zhang Shi actually took one of Gai Yu Ye's prescription slips and with calligraphy as bold as flying dragons and dancing phoenixes, wrote upon it two lines of script that said. This is to certify that this person is a woman. Signed. Zhang Shi. Sect leader of Gai Yu Ye sect. He even stamped it in crimson red with the official seal of the Gai Yu Ye sect leader. Shui Meng. Mei Hangxiu looked at him while holding himself from bursting into laughter. He was holding himself so hard that it felt as if his ribs might crack from the effort. What the fuck? Shui Meng crumpled up that prescription and said, Is Zhang Yuchen a pig? Mei Hangxiu smiled and raised one slender finger. He brought it close to his lips, indicating that he should lower his voice and calm his temper. He said with a smile, He's a celestial bird. Not a chicken, not a duck and definitely not a pig. You saw it yourself just now. Actually. He paused for a moment, his smile fading as he looked at Shui Meng thoughtfully, I couldn't help feeling that, you look a little like him. Shui Meng jumped up like a cat that had its tail stepped on and shook his head like a rattle drum, that's. That that's nonsense. The two of us are complete strangers with each other. We are totally not related at all. I see. The color of Mei Hanks Yu's jade-like eyes deepened. After a moment of silence, he let up and didn't press any more. He just smiled and thought aloud mysteriously, I wonder, if you were the one cursed by the scroll spirit, what kind of bird would you turn into? Under Mei Hanks Yu's relentless gaze, Shui Meng felt that he definitely could not fail lest he risk death. Mei Hangxia could be intending to pluck all his feathers to gift them to some girl in return for her favor. Yes. This was definitely the kind of thing that Mei Hangxia would do. He, Shui Ziming, definitely must not fail. Aside from himself, the elders and numerous disciples of Dobeo Manor also thought that Shui Ziming definitely must not fail and turn into an animal as well. After all, Shui Meng was the last card in their hands and couldn't be played carelessly. Thus Elder Chen Suyuan said, I advise that you three gentlemen shouldn't act recklessly. Since this scroll spirit took after the traits of sect leader Shui and head disciple Mei Hanks Yu, you must think carefully about the kind of woman you both like the most in order to ensure that the scroll spirit would fall in love at first sight. Mei Hanks Yu said, In my opinion, all women in the world are beautiful in their own ways. If this spirit is so picky, it couldn't be because of me. He turned to Shui Meng and said, We should consult sect leader Shui for his wisdom. Shui Meng thought for a moment and said, The best woman in the world is my mother. Upon hearing this sentence, Mei Hanks Yu immediately stopped smiling. The pair of jade-like eyes below his brows looked with trepidation towards Shui Meng's face and sighed softly in his heart. The truth was, when he pretended to be Shouho, it was really to keep him company. He knew precisely that Shui Meng had been feeling down lately. Even if Shui Meng would occasionally raise ruckus like he would in the past, he knew that part of Shui Meng's heart had been irrevocably broken into pieces. He wanted to bring him a bit of happiness, tease him into laughter, helped his heart heal even for a little bit in the spirit of their friendship and affection. However, it seemed that Shui Meng's scar was exceptionally deep. Mei Hangxiu shook his head internally and raised his hand as he said, Of that, I completely agree. Elder Chen Suyuan said awkwardly, But. Madame Wang was. The more the old man said, the more pained he sounded. Mei Hangxiu interrupted him and turned to Shui Meng, Let's talk of someone else as an example. Someone else? There isn't anyone else. No one else is worthy in my eyes. Then think a bit more carefully. It's all right if it's someone that doesn't exist, Mei Hangxiu said. What sort of woman you were looking for, we can decide on the appearance to match them. Shui Meng has no choice but to start thinking seriously about that. After a long time, he finally started talking about what he would be looking for. First, she has to have fair skin. All right. Second, big eyes. Good. 
third, she must be, I at least prettier than, you know, he became visibly uncomfortable. She has to be prettier than, than she may. The crowd listened as Shwemen listed the traits that Shwemen was looking for in a spouse. At the beginning, the elders were talking notes in order to have a guideline in searching for the suitable candidate. But after hearing more than a dozen requirements, the elders stopped the stupid endeavor. It's because they have begun to realize that what Shwemen wanted was probably wasn't a woman but a Buddha. They were afraid that only a Buddha would have the patience to tolerate the juvenile requirements that Shwemen was enumerating. Were these really something that a young man in his twenties should be asking for? And he wasn't finished yet. The twentieth, she must genuinely and sincerely admires me. Twenty-first, she must be diligent and thrifty and doesn't waste too much soap when doing the laundry. Twenty-second, restraint is a virtue. I don't want someone who eats too much. Two bowls of rice each meal should be enough. Twenty-third, I don't really like girls who used makeup so she shouldn't use cosmetics. 24th, but she should still be beautiful, with skin that's naturally fair and rosy and her cheeks should have a natural blush. 25th, she needs to have slender legs. 26th, but she shouldn't be taller than me. Finally, one furious female disciple couldn't take it anymore. Within the crowd that barely resisted rolling their eyes and yawning this entire time, an indignant shout was heard, For fuck's sake, enough already. Why don't you go home and marry a red-crowned crane? Shwemen crossed his arms as he turned his head to look at her. The present is totally different from the past. Female cultivators could dare challenge Shwemen before but now, he was a full-pledged sect leader. For the sake self-preservation, the previously irate female cultivator nervously licked her lips and shrunk down with an apologetic mua, eh he he. Please ignore me sect leader Shwe, I was just talking in my sleep. He he. 27th, she can't sleep talk. The female disciple. When Shwe Meng reached the 370th count, Mei Han Shwe finally interrupted him. Everyone let out a huge sigh of relief. They thought that if no one stop him, sect leader Shwe might continue throughout the night until dawn. Mei Han Shwe had obviously developed a headache. Though his expression remained ice cold this entire time, a trace of aggravation was evident on his face. Shwe Ziming, please stop. I'm not finished yet. Not caring that he hasn't finished yet, Mei Han Shwe instead asked coldly, Have you heard of the story of Nuwa? Shwe Meng's expression was blank as he asked, What do you mean? Were you the one who forced her to die? Seeing that the two were arguing again, Mei Hanks Yu smiled helplessly as he raised his hands up and interjected, All right. Let's all calm down. Shwe Ziming, let me ask you a question. Is there someone out there who you would never dismiss, never argue with and who you would never dare ignore whenever you see them? He paused for a moment and explained to the crowd with a smile, I think this person will be a little easier to find than what Shwe Meng was looking for in a wife. All the people who had been tormented by Shwe Meng for more than two hours nodded their heads in agreement. Shwe Meng glared at him as he said, Well, it definitely won't be someone like you. Mei Hanks Yu didn't even raise to the bait as he smiled and said, I know. After thinking for a while, Shwe Meng suddenly stood up straight, eyes opening wide, he actually did think of someone that he would absolutely never look down upon. Yes. There's someone. My Shizun, Chu Wanning. A sleepy female cultivator who fallen asleep curved into a fetal position while Shwe Meng was enumerating the virtues he was looking for a woman was suddenly startled awake. She furiously wiped away the drool that had fallen from her mouth while she was asleep and loudly asked, Eh? What got it? Who's got it? Grandmaster Chu got it? The whole crowd of disciples. She raised her head only to see the face of Shwe Meng who was glowering at her with the same ferocity as when he was facing a ghost. She let out a scared eep and silently shrunk back into a ball and hid herself in the farthest corner of the hall. End chapter Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun.
Extra chapters. Xuemeng's blind date. Wanning is super great. Chu Wanning. Mo Ran. Dobeo Manor. When these three names appeared in Xuemeng's mind at the same time, it reminded him of something unbearable in the past. Back then, Taxi and Jun told him that Chu Wanning was having sex with Mo Ran in one of the guest rooms of the Dobeo Manor and it was right in front of him concealed only by the bed curtains. The trauma that it had inflicted upon him was simply too great. If he could turn back time, he would have screamed out to interrupt Taxi and Jun as soon as he spoke the first words. Don't say it. I would start imagining it. Yet one cannot walk back to the past and can only face the present. In order to subdue the scroll spirit, Xuemeng had to ask Elder Chen Suyuan to write a letter to his Shizun and cousin and respectfully request Grand Master Chu to come out of his seclusion to help out with the situation. Then they began to wait. Nanping Mountain was on the banks of West Lake and was the mountain closest to Dobeo Manor. Even if a cultivator didn't travel by sword and went through the barrier hidden in the clouds by foot, it would only take about one or two Shishin to reach. But for some reason, after the letter was sent and they waited until dawn, there was still no response from Chu Wanning. Mei Hangxiu was very perceptive and upon noticing the situation, he looked at the rising sun, stood up and said to the crowd, we should all go and get some rest. I'm afraid we won't hear from them at all this morning. The Dobeo Manor's disciples had stayed up all night. Hearing what he had said, they didn't think too deeply about its implications. They simply nodded their heads, yawned and scattered about with the intent of taking a restorative nap. Only Xuemeng frowned at his way and asked, Why aren't we waiting any longer? My Shizun will arrive soon. He never sleeps in. Mei Hangxiu smiled slightly and said, There's still so much you don't understand about your Shizun. Bullshit. You think you knew him better than I do? Want to bet on it? Oh. Mei Hangxiu knew how obstinate he was and his spirit was roused. He said as if to tease a proud bird, What are we betting on? I seem to recall that you didn't take much money with you when you left so what could you wager? Who said I didn't take any? Just you wait, Xuemeng gritted his teeth as he began to feel around for his money pouch. It wasn't as if he did not have money but he had become a sect leader only recently. Although he did his best to show off in front of others, the truth was, he still lacked experience. Elder Suanji was worried that he would spend money wastefully or he would be cheated by a woman like Huaro Wei, so the elders as a group meticulously managed his funds for him. So every month, Xuemeng would only get a handful of pocket money from Elder Suanji. And this month, to his utter shame, he has already spent the majority of his savings in that date with Jiangxi. And yet, Jiangxi still dared to look down on him. That look Jiangxi gave him while under the disguise of Ruoying was obviously mocking him for being poor. Moreover, there was those dates with Taxi and Jun and the other marvelous blind dates. Zi Yuziming was the proudest son of his generation and thus has been squeezed by those flirty bitches to the point that he had to start rationing the numbers of straws in his straw hut. But in order to defend Chu Wanning's reputation, no matter how hard and no matter how exhausted he was, sect leader Shui must place that bet. Worse comes to worse, he could cut the amount of straws by half. And so, Mei Hangxiu watched on as Shui Meng rummaged through all his nooks and crannies and take out a scattered pile of copper coins which all together numbered probably less than 50. Shui Meng presented them on the table giving the impression of as if he was presenting 500 billion. Two small copper coins even rolled and tumbled down to the ground. Mei Hangxiu. I bet that Shizun will arrive after breakfast time. Shui Meng declared with the firmest resolution. Mei Hangxiu, and if he doesn't come, that's up to you. Mei Hangxiu looked at the shabby pile of copper coins, turned his head and smiled. I heard that Grand Master Chu once said that if one is going to gamble, one might as well gamble big. Forget about money, let's wager something else. What something else? Something like, you'll run naked through the street or sell your skills in a pleasure house. Shui Meng. Mei Han Shui raised his brows and said, 
What's this nonsense? May Hanksia covered his mouth with his palm, rolled his other hand and smiled, don't take it seriously. I was just teasing him. Let me think, May Hanksia crossed his arms and frowned in thought. How about this, the loser would have to dress up as a girl in accordance to the winner's instructions. Shwemeng wrinkled his forehead with dissatisfaction. Hold on May Hanksyu. Have I ever forced you into women's clothes before? Why can't you seem to get past this issue? This time, both May Hanksyu and May Han Shui stared at him with an aura of unfathomable mystery to the point that Shwemeng could feel goosebumps rising along his spine. Stuttering, he said, What? That's a joke right? I... I haven't done anything like that before, have I? I have always been upright, never bullying the weak. Of course. May Hanksyu said with a smile, Shwemeng is the best. Shwemeng didn't know why but he can't help but feel ominous. It turned out that Shwemeng's intuition was occasionally spot on. Shwemeng waited all morning, full of hope. He waited until the hope was lost and finally fell into despair. In the afternoon, he finally heard an announcement from the disciples outside of the manor, Grand Master Chu and Grand Master Mo have arrived. Chu Wanning's hair was bound with a jade guan, his white robes were billowing. As always, his demeanor was pure and profound, aloof and cold, carrying the aura of a celestial being. Yet for some reasons, his eyes seemed to be a bit tinted with red, his expression a bit strange and there was the smallest hint of anger lines between his brows. On the other hand, Mo Ran who was standing a step behind his back wore an expression of helplessness, looking somewhat comical. It turned out that last night, Chu Wanning had indeed heard the cries of the spirit bird that Dobeo Manor has sent outside of their dwellings. Concerned that it might be an emergency, he wanted to go out and have a look. But last night, Taxian Jun was around and he was someone who couldn't care less about somebody else's troubles. Besides, at that time, they were in the middle of it, how could he stop? Several times, Chu Wanning asked him to stop and initially, Taxian Jun humored him by saying, almost there, or we'll check it out as soon as we're done. But Mo Ran was a dirty scoundrel. What almost there? What checking after we're done? They were never done and therefore no checking to speak of. While Ma Yun's messenger bird was screaming its head off outside, Taxi and Jun's own little bird wasn't the least bit tired. Finally, Chu Wanning insisted on going out to see what was going on. In a fit of rage, Taxi and Jun actually tied Chu Wanning in a pillar and in order to coax him to obedience, he forcefully feed him aphrodisiac. Due to Taxi and Jun's shenanigans, Chu Wanning spent the spring night in endless delightful bliss. Even later, when at the middle of the night the personality was switched back to Grand Master Mo, Chu Wanning was in such a state the Grand Master Mo couldn't help himself. Thus, it wasn't until the afternoon on the next day that Chu Wanning woke up in haze and finally read the message from Dobeo Manor stating that the scroll spirit was wreaking havoc all over Linen. The delay was caused by Taxi and Jun. However Grand Master Mo and Taxi and Jun were one and the same. Thus, at the end of the day, it was all Mo Ran's fault. Due to this, Chu Wanning refused to speak with him during the entire trip down the mountain, treating him as if he was nothing but air. Grand Master Chu. Grand Master Mo. Greetings to Grand Master Chu. Greetings to Grand Master Mo. Chu Wanning had already learned what happened to the scroll spirit and all the trouble it had been causing. When he entered the reception hall and saw Shui Meng, he wanted to scold him for his willful stupidity. But Shui Meng's position couldn't compare to what it was before and thus he need to save him some face. At the end, Chu Wanning just frowned slightly and said, How did you get into such mess? Shui Meng originally wanted to voice his complaints but upon seeing Chu Wanning, he got so happy that he immediately tried to explain, She's un, the scroll spirit imitated me, I didn't intentionally. Mo Ran caught his attention and said, Shui Meng, after we said our farewells at Vucham Town, you. Why did you keep on messing with that scroll? What do you mean? 
Mo Ran wanted to roll his eyes but since it was a secret between brothers, he tried to secretly mouth to Shui Men behind Chu Wanning's back, You dumbass. Why are you sowing wild oats? Is this kind of behavior worthy of sect leader Zhang? Shui Men didn't get it and said, Can't you raise your voice a bit? Do you have a sore throat? Mo Ran. Screw him for being a dumbass. But if he turned his back on Shui Men, this mess will never be resolved so they might as well help out. Except. What? You want Chi Zun to dress up as a woman? Shui Meng answered awkwardly, I don't want to do it either. Well, actually, we could. We could ask Gai Yu Ye to issue a certification that says that this person is, is. He peeked at Chu Wanning's austere and cold profile and realized that he couldn't say the word this person is a woman or something like that even if it killed him. Mo Ran looked like the sky was falling. How could he let Chu Wanning show himself in front of other people all dolled up like that? This is madness. But he knew that something needs to be done to clear up this mess. He looked at Chu Meng and braced himself, looking as if he was having a real hard time saying what he was about to say. After a long silence, he finally managed to helplessly say, I'll do it instead. Shui Meng looked up to him, dumbfounded. Mo Ran continued, I will face the scroll spirit in his stead. You, you want to dress up as a woman. Why not? Shui Meng asked skeptically, Tang Ji, are you feeling confused about yourself? Mo Ran was startled, then felt wounded. He turned to Chu Wanning and said, Shizun, Shui Meng is saying that I am not good looking. A sense of shame coloring his tone. Chu Wanning knew that he was just trying to initiate a conversation with him. Ignoring his petulant voice, he relaxed and drank a cup of freshly brewed green tea. He raised his gaze and asked, Why do you need to dress up? Isn't a solution already available? No one understood what he meant. Chu Wanning turned his face towards Mo Ran slightly and said indifferently, Take out your kin kin pouch. It was the first time that Chu Wanning spoke with him since they went down the mountain and thus, Mo Ran couldn't help but felt overjoyed. However, Chu Wanning's expression was still odd and his words were void of any gentleness which made him feel disappointed. For a moment, he felt very much like the master of the house who was being scolded by his pampered concubine while being forced to fish out his money pouch. He was a bit conflicted on whether to be sad or happy about it. A kinkin pouch was the equivalent of a cultivator's entire treasury. Chu Wanning was asking for Mo Weiyu's treasury and wasn't even asking nicely about it. However, no matter how unhappy Mo Weiyu about it, he would still hand it over at him. Why did he let himself get so beastly last night? A circle of people intently watched Chu Wanning rummage through Mo Ran's kinkin pouch to see what is this ready solution was. They were all thinking that these grand people have unique kinds of ideas just like how Zhang Shi's idea of cross-dressing by presenting a medical certificate. They were all looking forward to what kind of astonishing performance Chu Wanning would come up with. Would he pull ten deities to hold a banner behind him that would say something like, You hang of the night sky, the Baidu immortal Chu Wanning has entered the scene? As the crowd let their imagination ran wild, they heard Chu Wanning whose sword-like brows were knitting, said, your kin kin pouch is such a disaster. What are you putting in here? Mo Ran self-consciously rubbed the side of his nose. He used to be very neat and tidy, used to arrange his pouch very meticulously. However, since all of his souls were reunited within his body and with his character switching every three days, coupled with the secret struggle between two personalities, the mess was reflected in his kin kin pouch. For instance, Taxi and June would sneak hot pepper seeds in it hoping to plant some peppers in Nanping Mountain but when he switched with Grandmaster Mo, he would throw those pepper seeds out. When Taxi and June returned and found out, he would be furious and lament that this life was unfair and if he can't be happy, he will make sure that his other personality won't be happy either. Thus, he would make a mess of his kinkin pouch, smashing the trinkets that Grandmaster Mo collected, or pawning Grandmaster Mo's things down the mountain and use the money to buy himself beautiful robes. 
So how could this kinkin pouch not be such a mess? Everything was mixed together and with things all jumbled up, it was quite hard to find a specific thing. Chu Wanning set aside the things that were obstructing his search by putting them on top of the table. Shui Men was curious so he went over to have a look. Records of gods and demons. Mo Ran explained, this is mine. I wanted to learn more about the histories of ancient gods and demons. Oh, not bad. Shui Men went on to read, The Night Sky Collection. This book has the histories of many cultivators. Our predecessors all had different reputations and faced different challenges because of them but they also had their own aspirations and obsessions. They're like stars in the night sky, each one shines above the night sky with their own light. It's a very interesting read. I can't believe you've progressed this much. Shui Meng was quite surprised, you're reading one book after another. Mo Ran smiled and said, it's because she's untaught me well. Shui Meng went to the next book, Postpartum Care for Saos. Mo Ran's smile froze in his face. Finally, he said resolutely while waving his hand. This was purchased by Taxi and June. It has nothing to do with me. Shui Meng. Chu Wanning was not paying attention earlier but upon hearing the latest exchange, he raised his eyes and asked, why did he buy this? We don't have pigs at home. Mo Ran stuttered, I, he, it's because one time he went down the mountain to go to Yurong and saw the people of the village was going to hold a livestock contest. And that time, he was inexplicably confident that he can win and join the competition. Unfortunately, he got beaten by the village's veterinarian Wang. He got so angry and bought the book. He reckoned that if he studied hard, he'll definitely win next year and regain his honor. The more he talked, the more embarrassed he felt. When he heard the young disciples of Dobeo Manor who couldn't help their snickering, Mo Ran shut his mouth in his shame and glanced over to Chu Wanning with some amount of trepidation. Chu Wanning asked incredulously, why on earth would you participate in a livestock contest? There, there were prizes, Mo Ran blushed slightly as he lowered his head and muttered, I think, if he won, he thought he could buy you the finest clothes from Fei Yunzai. Chu Wanning said quietly, Fei Yunzai is near Zhangdong Hall. That Huarou Wei had sent someone to bring eight boxes full of clothes and accessories from that place and you burn everything without even letting me know. Now you want to go and buy stuff from there. It's not the same. Mo Ran said immediately. I don't like the way that woman looks at you. She better not think I can't see what she's scheming. Just look at the things she sent your way, outer robes, guan and inner clothes that you have to wear near your skin, the more he spoke, the darker his face became. She better not be imagining what she's unlook like while wearing those things she bought. As Chu Wanning listened to this rant, one couldn't tell if his eyes were displaying helplessness or embarrassment but one thing was visible, those dark fathomless pools had become softer. He then asked suddenly, who are you today, the Mo Ran of the other world or of this world? Of course, I'm me from this world. Mo Ran was briefly surprised. She's un, why do you ask? Just look at how you are acting now. Chu Wanning's eyes finally held a glimmer of a smile. How are you different from the other you? He had always been an icy beauty, cold down to the bones and his expressions was so subtle that most people would miss seeing this tiny smile of his. But for Mo Ran, even if Chu Wanning only showed a thread of wrinkle in his brows, he could definitely feel the change just like the blowing of the wind or the drops of snow or rain. Seeing that he was no longer angry, Mo Ran couldn't help but lowered his eyelashes, dropped his gaze and smiled, his cheeks dimpling. Chu Wanning seemed to want to say more but felt that what he said just now was a bit embarrassing. So, he turned his head again and stopped speaking with Mo Ran. But this kind of ignoring and the one before they came here obviously meant two different things. Mo Ran just chuckled and obediently stood beside him like a quiet good little boy. Chu Wanning finally found what he was looking for in the kinkin pouch, got it. The illusion sachet. His long, slender, and well-proportioned hand held the band of the sachet as he said, 
these were sold together with the sorrow relieving scroll and allow the wearer to alter their appearance based on their original appearance without the need for actual changing of dress or physical form. Everyone from the Dobeo Manor. Chu Wanning paused for a moment to take in the reaction around him and asked with the greatest amount of incredulity, has no one here ever realized this? The makers of the sorrow relieving scroll and the illusion sachet shook their heads in unison. It was unknown who first came up with the phrase to ride a donkey to look for a horse or to ride a donkey to look for a donkey but for sure they were referring to these cultivators from Dobeo Manor. In this way, the issue of dressing up was finally resolved and everyone heaved a collective sigh of relief. As it was time for dinner, they all planned to quickly head to the dining hall to fill their stomach and then wait in the evening for the next appearance of the scroll spirit. As everyone left one by one, Mei Hangxiu suddenly appeared right beside Shue Meng's ear and whispered, Shue Ziming. Shue Meng was suddenly extremely alert, what? Mei Hangxiu said with a small smile, I want to tell you a secret. Shue Meng's intuition was telling him that it's better not to know any secret from Mei Hangxiu but his curiosity got the better of him, what is it? Mei Hangxiu said gently, it's just, that method that Grand Master Chu pointed out, actually, I had thought of it already. Shue Meng was flabbergasted as he turned to him and asked, they why didn't you say something before? Because it was Zhang Yuchen who had to cross dress before, Mei Hangxiu said with a smile. I didn't tell him because I wanted to make things a little difficult for him and let you have a good laugh. Shue Meng was ready to give him a good scolding but upon hearing that, the urge to do so dried up. Mei Hangxiu chuckled, aren't you going to thank me? Thank you for what? What about after Zhang Shi left? Why didn't you say anything then? Oh, after he left, Mei Hangxiu paused for a second, his bright eyes filled with mirth. He raised a fingertip to his lips and smiled, I didn't say anything because I wanted to make things a little difficult for you and give myself a good laugh. Shue Meng. By the way, I would like to remind you that you have lost your bet. Remember your promise. I'll be waiting. In your dreams. Shue Meng couldn't help but roar, fuck your waiting. You want me to dress as a woman for you. In your next life. Kill this fantasy now. The sound of his voice startled the people into looking at each other with questioning gaze. They had just learned something that they didn't know before. In not so quiet whispers, they conferred. Aya, sect leader Shue is going to cross dress. Looks like sect leader Shue is going back on his words and won't do it. Poor young master Mei, he won the bet and still ended up getting scolded. How pitiful. Shue Meng's face was getting greener and greener as the murmuring of the crowd around him continued. Mei Hangxiu got silent for a moment then asked with a smile, are you really that unwilling? Stop bullshitting me. Rude. Mei Hangxiu smiled again and nudged Mei Han Shue with his elbow, gee, look at him. Isn't he fun? Mei Han Shue looked at Shue Meng who had blown up like a puffer fish and said indifferently, it's not fun. Don't make him cross dress either. Why? He's hot enough. Shue Meng, you dash. You dash. Hot enough to make my eyes feel as if they're on fire. Shue Meng was about to explode. Mei Han Shue was even worse than Mei Hangxiu. Mei Hangxiu only said that he's hot while Mei Han Shue actually said he made his eyes burn. Shue Meng's hackles couldn't help but rise as he yelled heedless of the consequences. Mei Han Shue stop right now. You come back here. Who the fuck is so ugly that they make your eyes burn? Have you seen me all dolled up, huh? You think I wouldn't dare? If you have the guts, let's see who's better at it, eh? Mei Hangxiu smiled, ah, so you really want. Before he could finished, Mei Han Shue interrupted him by pulling his arm to put a stop to this nonsense. Then he turned to Shue Meng and said, No. According to you, you would be leaving cross-dressing in your next life. Fuck that. Shue Meng was really provoked. He pointed at Mei Han Shue, raised his handsome brows and asked, When did I say I'd be willing to do it in my next life? 
Mahan Shui raised his eyebrow and answered, You just said it just now. So please, in this lifetime, focus on being a good sect leader. Don't be a harlot. Shui Meng stuttered, How, how dare you, how dare you, call me a... Yes, I dare. Mei Han Shui said indifferently blinking his blue-green eyes as he if he was taunting him. Then that's settled. You owe us a bet. I'll wait for you in our next lives, Lady Shui. Shui Meng stood rooted to the spot, stunned for a long while. The moment that Mei Hanks Yu turned his head, he screamed, Who owes you a bet? What did you call me? Mei Han Shui. Don't you dare walk away. I'll fucking kill you. Argh. Come back here. End chapter.